All right, so I get a lot of questions about this topic. Um, what I'm talking about are e-collars. Um, and just real quick, if you're having issues with your dog, this is not something, this is the last thing you wanna go out and buy. Um, if you're having problems or issues with your dog in terms of behavior or training, um, my neighbor's just pulled up, Coda's checking them out. Um, he's, on, he's on place right now, being nice and calm. No, he's not tied up to anything. Um, he know, but he knows when he's been given the place command, he has to stay up there and be cool, calm, and collective, regardless of what's going on. Um, but the point is, again, in short, if you're having issues with your dog, uh, sorry, but um, if you're having issues, pick up the phone and contact a sound obedience trainer. Um, going out and buying, you know, a leather leash, going out and buying, um, you know, any of the hardware that a sound obedience trainer uses, or going out and let alone buying an e-collar, um, that's not going to help you, you know, does that make sense? Um, what's going to help you is, again, contacting a professional, explaining the issue that you're having, um, and then getting them to train and condition the dog um, in a proper and a safe and a sound manner. Uh, now, an e-collar, again, this is not a tool that you ever want to start using until you've worked with the dog for an extended amount of time. Um, and usually we don't start working these in until the back end of training. Um, if you encounter someone, a trainer or a training facility that wants to slap these on the dog on day one and start using them right away, that's usually not someone you want to work with. And let me clarify that, you know, if you have a dog that comes in and the own, like if I have a dog that comes in and the owner says, yes, I want the dog e-collar conditioned, I want the dog collar conditioned, I say, okay, and if they've already ordered the collar, if we order that right away, I may have the dog wear this. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off just to show you. I may have the dog wear this in the beginning, but not only is the collar turned off, the transmitter is also turned off, I'm powering this down, so nothing's on anymore. Um, but I usually have the dog, no, place. I usually have the dog wear the collar, you know, while we work through training. That way the dog doesn't associate anything negative with the collar. Does that make sense? They're just kind of like, oh, okay. And then once, you know, that entire time, we're working the dog with our leash. You know, this is our primary tool. Um, and once the dog is ready, once you've worked with the dog for a week and a half, three weeks into training, you know, then you can then you can turn your collar on and you can start working it in at a very low level in conjunction with your leash. But your leash, this is your this is your number one tool. This this is your primary dog training tool. Does that make sense? Um, so this video is more so for Coda's dad. Um, I'm just gonna go over with him how to turn the collar on and off. Now this is a little different. This is an ET800. This is for dogs that are 20 pounds and up. Uh, the mini educator and the standard educator are for dogs that are five pounds and up. Um, and to turn that collar on is a little bit different than this one, just to clarify. So with the ET800, if you can notice um, for Coda's dad here, if you notice there's a, uh, it's kind of hard to show from this angle. There's a button, see right there underneath the contact point right here. So we're gonna go, we're gonna press that once now our collar is on, and this is going to this is going to indicate in blink green. That just lets us know that the the collar, the receiver, is on. Now there's an on off button right here on the back of the transmitter. We're just going to hold that. Now our transmitter, the remote, sort of like your remote control to the TV, or the remote control car, or, or the drone. You know, I don't have one of those, but that, that looks kind of cool. But anyway, this this is sort of your like remote control. Okay, now Coda is on a 7%, which is, which is extremely low for a dog given his size, temperament, you know, drive, nerve structure, um, you know, but all, all dogs are gonna respond differently to different levels, if that makes sense. And the more you train, the more you work with your dog, you might notice that you can even dial down from even a seven, does that make sense? The more you work and the more you further your training, a lot of times you can dial the collar back lower and lower, does that make sense? Um, so he's on a seven. Now he's set up on what is what is referred to as manual continuous mode. I'm not sure if you can see the M and the C on there. No, not MC as like a rapper or, or you know, microphone composer, but MC is for manual continuous mode. Now, what I like about manual continuous mode, um, so these two buttons right here, that's for your electronic stimulation. 
Um, this is set up for a vibrate, uh, which is referred to as blunt stimulation. You can also set it up for a for tone. That's what the T is for. Um, but he's set up um, with again the blunt stimulation, the vibrate mode, and he's also set up on just standard electronic stimulation. Now, what I like about the manual continuous mode, you notice there's two different buttons here. There's a red, or excuse me, there's a black and there's a red. Now, it doesn't matter which one of these you press. It's it's always going to be sorry. I have the light on. Um, it's always going to be a seven, you know. So it's essentially dummy proof. Um, now the black button, you press that once, even if you hold it, it's just a one-time correction. That's all it is. So the dog gets a little in front and heel, no heel, you know, the dog gets back. You know, same with the red, no heel, but if you hold the red button down, it'll give continued stimulation. Now, you don't need to do this a whole lot. You know, if you catch the dog in the act, like if the dog jumps off the place bed, and you have this in your hand and you catch the dog in the act, you can say, no, you know, or no place. And when the dog sort of, you know, comes to and, and makes eye contact with you or the head turns around, you know, then you can let go of that, you know, pick up your leash, heel the dog back to the bed, and, and again, just repeat, no place. You know, the dog does not need to be coming off the bed unless you tell them free or unless you you know you spin them back into heel and we go heel on out the house and go on a walk or give the dog their doggy time you know do their business that sort of thing the dog understands that regardless of what's going on i have to stay on place i have to stay cool calm and collective no barking no whining on place no acting erratic on there you know we want to sort of feed into the calm dog not the excited dog does that make sense so so that's that's your electronic stimulation you know red and black again it's going to be a seven for either one um, black is just a one time so no heel red is the same deal um, but if you hold it it will give the dog continued stimulation and so you need to be sort of careful with that um, you know the, the dog doesn't need more than this or, or no heel no get back at heel um, you, know, you can so, you could sort of finagle it you don't need to do you don't need to do that a whole lot but like if you say no heel and then the dog creeps back up, you know, no heel, that sort of deal. Um, so that, that's the electronic stimulation. The blunt stimulation, that's this button here on the back side um, by the, the antenna or antennae. Um, that, I'm sure you can hear it, that's, it's vibrating the buckle on the collar. Um, that's very similar to your phone or a pager, if anyone remembers what those are. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's just like that, you know. Now you wouldn't need to sit here and hold it continuously like I'm doing, but I'm just giving you an example. And you can use this too, you know. No heel or no get back at heel, you know. No down, no sit, no get back on place, you know. It's it's the same as electronic, you know. Some dogs respond better to the blunt stimulation, the vibrate mode. Other dogs respond better to the electronic stimulation mode. A lot of that has to do with the contact points too. Uh, Coda is on upgraded contact points for a longer hair breed. What I like about what I like about these contact points is you just put it on the dog, and it works right away. You don't have to like sit there and peel the hair back. Um, as long as these are making contact on the skin, you know the, it's it's gonna work. Uh, or making contact on the body, I should say. It's not like the more older traditional style contact points where you really have to pull the hair back and make sure they're making direct contact on the skin, not so much the fur. This, this you can just slap it on the dog and you're ready to rock and roll. That's what I like about it. Um, and that brings me to another point. The, the dog is not designed to wear this more than about 12 hours a day. Um, you can give or take with that just a little bit. But So just my general rule of thumb, when the dog wakes up in the morning, you know, put this on the dog while it's still in the crate, you know, then we heal outside, give the dog their potty time, whatever. Then you go on about your day. Airplane coming through. Um, keep this on the dog um, all throughout the day. And then at night, you know, you can you can take it off. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Um, and again, this comes with the upgraded uh, quick release buckle collar. Um, so you don't have to sit there and like size it up every time you put it on the dog, which is a nice touch for the clients. Um, so he's already pre-sized, ready to rock and roll. You may notice several months down the road, you know, depending on how much you're feeding him, depending on how much exercise he has, 
Um, if his weight goes up, you may need to adjust this. You might need to give him just a little bit more slack in it. Um, but you want these to be pretty snug. If you see those pictures on the internet of like, oh, this is shocking the dog or this is burning the dog, no, that's from dumbasses who put this on the dog too loose and never took it off. They left it on for like weeks at a time when it says right there, plain as day in the manual, not to do that. Um, and if this is too loose and it's sliding around on the skin, that will cause irritation um, and it can look real nasty when the dog gets ex when the dog gets a skin infection from this sliding around on the skin, the contact points. But again, if you follow the if you follow the directions, if you follow the instructions, put it on the dog in the morning, the end of the night. You know, once you take the dog out for its last potty time and put it up, the collar comes off. You turn everything off. You know, you'll you know you'll you'll be smooth sailing. Um, so that's the collar. It does have this pretty cool nifty light feature on it. This button right here, the same button as the on off, but instead of holding it, you press it once. That, that gives a beacon. So if you're healing the dog or you're walking the dog late at night and the sun's coming down, that's just sort of a nice safety feature to have. You can hit it again one time and that's just a, just a straight beacon. It doesn't look too bright right now, um, but it is pretty, pretty damn bright when the sun's going down. And no, this isn't, this isn't giving the dog stimulation when you're turning the light on and off. Just, you know, I get questions about that. So again, this is electronic stimulation, always gonna be a seven no matter which one you press. Red is a one-time correction, even if you hold it, or excuse me, black is a one-time correction, even if you hold it. Red, same deal, but if you hold it, it will give continued stimulation. Again, that's not something you need to be worrying about or using a whole lot. Um, and again, the T button on the back side here is the vibrate mode, the blunt stimulation. And if you want, you could just use that. Again, no heel, no place, you know, no, stay in your sit, no, hold that down, quit getting ants in your pants. Again, no, don't ever you stay, just no sit, no down. Does that make sense? Um, but again, your leash, this is your number one tool, you know, this is, that's what you're going to be using the most. This is more of a backup communication mechanism when you're working the dog from a distance, okay? And no, this is not shocking the dog. This does not have amps in it. You know, this isn't a microwave or a vacuum cleaner. This creates an annoyance to the dog when the dog is screwing off or not, or not staying in behavior, staying in the behavior that the dog's been trained to do. This creates an annoyance to the dog for the dog to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I can't, I can't do that anymore. I have to stay in behavior. I have to be good. Does that make sense? Um, again, if you're having issues with your dog, do not go out and buy one of these. Pick up the phone and contact a sound obedience trainer and they will determine if your dog needs to be on this or not. A lot of dogs don't need to be on a knee collar. You know, I would argue it speeds up the training on the back end and allows you to have a secondary form of communication with the dog. But truthfully, all dogs don't need this. Um, you know, but it is, it is a nice tool to have, especially when you're working the dog at a distance or you're working the dog on really long recall and you, you want a backup mechanism, you know, versus having this really long, long line, you know, having to sit there and deal with all the time. Um, but again, this isn't something you start using in, until the dog, until the dog is ready. So the last thing I'll say too, if there's ever a time where there's chicken bones or glass on the ground and his nose hits the ground, again, their primary sense is their nose that overrides their sight, their eyes, and you know, their hearing, their ears. There's glass, chicken bones, sticks, you know, rocks, something he's, which he's been trained not to do this, but all dogs are opportunists. When dogs come back home, they will sort of, they will sort of push the envelope a little bit. But if there's a time where his health or safety is jeopardized and he's trying to eat something off the ground, you can press the black button and the, the black button and the red button together, and I've got it set up. It'll jump up five levels from seven to a 12. That just sends a more powerful message to the dog. No, place. I don't know what he's trying to eat, but that just sends a more powerful message to the dog. You know, hey, don't go after this. Don't put this in your mouth. Don't even think about eating this because it's going to jeopardize your health. You know, then we got to take you to the vet. We got to pay a whole lot of money. You know, on something that we should have. You know, something we just could have avoided outright together. That's not something you need to use a whole lot. But again, just if there's ever a time where you need to send a more powerful message to the dog so you don't jeopardize their safety, okay? So this is the ET800. This is Coda. If you have more questions, let us know. Thanks for watching. As always, take care.